Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we are going to do a little virtual microscope video. Um, so I found this program, it's called Virtual Lab, it uses a virtual microscope, and I found a blood smear slide. So let's load it in. So this is mimicking searching for white blood cells. Um, so this is a blood, blood human blood smear slide uh, stained here in... So most of the little red dots in this are red blood cells. So if we zoom in here, we can go all the way up to... 550 times magnification over here. Uh, you can change the brightness and things like that, but we won't mess with that. You can change the contrast here. So, you know, kind of how you would alter a microscope image as well. And up here in the left-hand corner, uh, we see the label up here for the distance. That's 15.5 micrometers. So that's just giving you an idea of the size of these things. So the goal today is to mimic the lab where we're looking for the different white blood cells. Remember, we're searching for five different white blood cells here. Uh, remember, the mnemonic is never let monkeys eat bananas, and that puts the white blood cells in order from most abundant to least abundant. So N for neutrophils, uh, for never. Let is for lymphocytes. And then M is for monocytes. And then never let monkeys eat bananas. E is for eosinophils, and then B is for basophils. So we're going to find all those today. Now, the easiest ones to find, of course, then, are the neutrophils. And we find those a lot in this microscope slide here. A lot of the purple pigments are the neutrophils, and that makes sense because they are the most abundant. So right here's one. So we see this multi-lobed nucleus in here. And that's what a neutrophil is identified as. So these are, neutrophils are a common phagocytic cell. And the most common, again, about 40% to 60% of your white blood cells are neutrophils. And here, down here, we see two other neutrophils. So lots of neutrophils are found in your blood. And a lot of the you know things in here are, or cells in here are neutrophils outside of the red blood cells, of course. Now, you might be wondering, what are these dark pigments here? Like right in here, we have these dark pigments, these little stained parts right here. Those are actually the platelets. So those are fragments that come off of megakaryocytes. So platelets are also part of that as well. So there's neutrophils. So boom, one done. Here we can, if we wanted to label this, you know, take an image of that, draw it. And that's a general structure of a neutrophil. Now there are different, here look, here's two neutrophils together. You can see there's this multi-lobed structure. And that's one way to identify the neutrophil. So neutrophils are also granulocytes, meaning they have granular pigments in them. And it's hard to see here, but you can see a slight pink hue on them as well. Uh, then next up, next most abundant ones are the lymphocytes. Uh, and I like to compare lymphocytes to monocytes because these two are the agranular ones where they lack granulation. Now there is a slight difference. So monocytes are slightly more pink in this stained image and um, lymphocytes are a little darker pigmented and have a little less cytoplasm on the outside. So what's the difference between a monocyte and a lymphocyte? So a monocyte is a large phagocyte and a lymphocyte can be, either can become B cells which produce antibodies or T cells which can uh, selectively destroy cells for a cellular mediated response. So here we want to start looking at some of these cells that have just general pigment structure. So here we see one. This is pretty filled. So if I had to guess this one, this would be a lymphocyte. Um, just the general structure of it. Not, it's a darker pink on the inside. So let's zoom around here and see what else we can find. Um, so again, I haven't like, this is the first time looking through all these. So I'm just hoping I can find them all. The hardest one to find will be um, a basophil. So if I find a, a basophil, we're going to focus on that one right away. This one, yeah, that might be a monocyte. No, no, right here. Right here's a good monocyte. Oops, let's move back down. Right here's a good monocyte. You see a uh, pink color for the nucleus and then um, a larger cytoplasm here. That's a good example of a monocyte. Whereas right here, you can see the difference. So right here's a monocyte. Let's see if we can get both these in the same frame. There we go. So lymphocyte, now I can't say uh, from looking at this right now whether that's a B cell or a T cell. If it's a little more purple like that, it's probably a B cell because of uh, antibody production. Uh, whereas down here we have a monocyte, a slightly pink, pinker shade. So there is a good comparison between a monocyte right here, a good monocyte, and then up here we have a good lymphocyte. 
So again, that's a good comparison between those two. So again, those are agranular or they lack granulation. So now we have two more left to find. So eat bananas, eisenophils and basophils. So eisenophils are what are releasing histamine and cause the inflammatory or allergic response. Um, and they also help break down uh, parasites. Now these have a characteristics, oh no, uh, eisenophils do not release histamine. Um, they do attack parasites. I mixed up uh, eisenophils and basophils. Basophils are what release histamine. Sorry, I was getting ahead of myself. So these ones are sometimes hard to find, but they have a characteristic earmuff look. Let's see if we can find one. Um, this might take a little bit. So there's a neutrophil. Now there's two monocytes. Oh, this one actually, this one right here, actually, we can jump ahead to this one. This one's probably a basophil. We see this pink globular, globular structure in there. So t telling the difference between a basophil and a lymphocyte can sometimes be tough, but the difference is granulation. And here, this pink is representing granulation or the spottiness is re representing granulation. Whereas you go back to where I showed the lymphocyte, it was pretty uh, consistent throughout. So uh, this one is probably basophil releasing histamine um, and causing the inflammatory response. So there we found the basophil. Now we have to find the earmuffs. No, there's a neutrophil. And these ones, uh, the eisenophils also have a pink hue around outside the earmuff nuclei or the the bilobed nuclei that they have so that's one way to tell a difference uh, that's neutrophil up there sometimes tough to find these depends on the blood smear i assume there's one here somewhere but this is what you would be doing in the laboratory if you were looking at this, uh, this one's pretty close. So here you kind of see that little earmuff look, uh, but this one, I don't see enough like pink shade out here, but this one might be a basophil. That's the kind of structure we're looking for when we're looking for um, a not a basophil, an eisenophil. The kind of structure we're looking for. But yeah, this is what you would have been doing in the lab. I'm just, you know, doing it for you here for the um, laboratory experience of searching for these white blood cells. And it's fun. It's almost like, where's Waldo? And it's cool. I found this virtual microscope. Uh, you can even download this, add the slides and everything. I could put a link to it in the description. All neutrophils. I think that was, that was a good eisenophil we found up there. It had that lobe structure. And that's a key characteristic. Actually, right here was one. Yeah. Now you don't see the connection right there between them, but this is a good example here. Two two little earmuffs coming down. So this is you know an eisenophil. So this is what's attacking parasites. So if you get a parasitic response, it would attack it. Let's see. Can we find anything else here? It's really cool to use this program too. You can have all kinds of slides that you can add. I was looking at a tardigrade earlier. So recommend checking it out. Ooh, what's down here? There's a little pocket of neutrophils down here at the bottom of the slide. Now, now remember, so the uh, basophils and eosinophils are the lowest concentration of the white blood cells. So they will be harder to find. And I think we did find one or two. Actually, this one might be, I think that's another basophil right here. There, I think that's another basophil. But yeah, I think that's a good little summary. Um, so in general, you just wanna know the structural characteristics of each. each. Now there's the, that's the previous basophil we looked at. So it looks like the eisenophils were the hardest ones to find on this one, uh, but it's okay. You, you get slides like that sometimes. It's so a just general, um, but here you can see in overall, all the little dark pigments you see in this, so the dark pigment here, 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 those are all 
white blood cells. Any stained pigment here, because there's a nuclei. You re we zoom into a singular red blood cell here. Remember, red blood cells are a nucleate. So no nuclei, the stain inside a red blood cell. Um, and then remember, for white blood cells, some are agranular, some are granular. So uh, granular ones are neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. Agranular ones or lacking granulation are the monocytes and the lymphocytes. So this is just a little summary uh, showing you this little virtual microscope and kind of mimicking the blood lab uh, or part of the blood lab we would have done. All right, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, try to draw uh, the cells I focused on when I did find a specific type in your notebooks or on a piece of paper, just so you can see that representation, the general uh, features of each, and then make sure you label each one as granular or agranular so that you can be able to identify them on a future assessment. All right, like I said, with that, have a great day. And if you have any questions, please let me know. And bye-bye. Mm -hmm.